Welcome back to our China adventures. If you've seen my last video, then you know our journey now brings us to Beijing. We flew in late last night and didn't film our departure in Xi'an or arrival here in Beijing. So, apologies for the lack of airplane or airport footage. But here we are, bright and early, ready to experience Beijing. Let's see where the day takes us. On the hunt for some food. Oh, there's something in there? Yeah, this one does. Oh, okay. I gotta say, I don't know how I would do this trip without Lou. Because I don't understand anything. This, all this time that I practiced my Mandarin, has barely served me well. <laughs> I mean, it has, but it also has. Your manner hasn't. is not practical. The one that you're like. <laughs> yeah, it's not practical Mandarin. It's very much like your your typical trying to ace a test type of Mandarin. Okay. Yo, that looks good. Okay. Niandou bao. This is the one that I I heard people order. Oh, that does look good. Is that like rice on the inside? It looks sticky. Oh wow. Oh, it's got some weight to it. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. Dang. Wow, really interesting. Kind of nutty, squishy.、Um, I think this is a paste, or do you think it's like a mochi、oh, okay. almost?、Mushed、yeah,、together? it's like it's like a bunch of nuts and stuff mushed、mm. together in some sort of a paste.、Mm. It's sweet.、Um, I don't know. It's good.、Mm. Oh my god! Look. Oh, the that, chestnut. chestnut. I want that. There's a big chestnut. Yeah, that's for Lou. <laughs> She loves her chestnut. So just around the corner from that bakery is like this really old-looking neighborhood. It's really cool, very like old style. You can tell it's been here for a long time. Lou went on to explain to me that this type of neighborhood is called a hutong. Essentially, a hutong is a maze-like neighborhood containing narrow streets and alleyways. What makes Hutong different from normal alleyways are that they are lined with traditional courtyard homes. Hutong are common in northern China, but especially in Beijing. They provide a unique window into the old lifestyle of Beijing locals. These types of neighborhoods first started to pop up during the Yuan Dynasty, approximately 700 years ago. In the mid 20th century, many Hutong were destroyed to make way for new developments. Though. In recent times, Beijing takes careful efforts to preserve their hutong along with their unique, rich culture. I advise anyone traveling to Beijing to check out hutong and get lost in their unique maze-like streets. You never know what you're gonna find. Has a slight acidity to it. It's,、uh, I think, a medium dark bean. I, I'm pretty sure.、Um, very full body kind of flavor. It pairs really well, of course, with the oat milk and the vibes here too. Probably the best I think we've seen in China as well. But look at it. It's in a tutu. That's so cute. Because we're gonna take out, right?、We're、yeah, yeah, yeah.、Okay. And also, she said there's a a what a、um, a chili inside. Oh. Yeah. One chili. <laughs> Wow! Wow! Interesting. Is it like spicy or something? Oh no, it's a it's peppercorn. Really? Like Sichuan peppercorn or just black pepper? Black pepper. Really? What did you think of this? I, I said. I would say it's、uh, the best one we've had so、yeah. far. You agree? Yeah, I like it. It's right. You know how I don't really like the、um, 
acidity, right? At the end. Yeah. But this one, I kind of You like can taste it. the acidity, right? Yeah. And it's really rich and mm -hmm. smooth. And mm -hmm. then at the end, it's, it's like kind of like, I don't know how I explain this. It's like in the beginning, it's like a, a bowl in your mouth. Yeah. You slowly slide away. Like oh. That, kind of. Isn't that like, uh, is that what they call mouthfeel? Maybe it's mouthfeel? In the beginning, yes. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next location. That right there? Yeah. yeah. On the brown? And how do you say it? Ru Xiao. Ru So if you're ever in Beijing, check this place out. You could seriously just do a whole bunch of videos on the different cafes uh, here in China. Doesn't matter what city, every city we've been to, the cafes all look so cool. Coffee's been hit or miss, I think, but uh, when it's good, it's good. Okay, I'd say we're ready to move on to another location. One which was actually recommended to us by our DD driver from earlier. It's close by, let's head there now. You know what? I have to say, oh, watch how they're taking a photo. I have to say, everything we've seen here is honestly so beautiful. But you're still the most beautiful thing here. I <laughs> know. I love you. <laughs> and sorry, I didn't mean to call you a thing, but these are things, so I just said things. Now that I'm done being a cheese ball, let's have a look around and find out exactly what we're seeing here. Like a full -on museum. Now that we've had a look around, let me tell you a little more about the Temple of Heaven. As you know, my videos aren't necessarily the educational type, but I'd like to give you brief facts here and there to fill in the gaps. So, the Temple of Heaven is a massive park and complex of religious buildings spanning 2.73 square kilometers. The strategic layout of the temple grounds and architecture has deep, cosmological meaning that is honestly just too complex for me to go into in this video. The various temple buildings here were used by emperors of the Ming and Qing dynasties. They were used specifically for ceremonial prayers and sacrifices asking for good harvests. The area of the temple grounds we are in right now is the altar of prayer for good harvests. This altar is the oldest of the buildings in the Temple of Heaven, built in 1420. This altar was used by the Emperor for ceremonies, praying for good weather and harvests. I think that's enough for now, but I'll pop in later with some more brief facts when we visit other parts of the temple. Now we find ourselves on the way to the Palace of Abstinence, taking a detour through the Flower Garden. Okay, so, what exactly is the Palace of Abstinence? First of all, the Palace of Abstinence lies next to the west gate of the Temple of Heaven and south of the flower garden we just walked through. It is surrounded by two outer walls, a moat, and contains a bell tower, palace of rest, and beamless hall. Three days before the heaven worship and ceremony, the emperor would arrive at the Palace of Abstinence. The Emperor would stay here alone for the entirety of these three days. 
The emperor wouldn't totally abstain from food, but instead would eat a vegetarian-only diet and avoid alcohol. Lastly, during these three days, the emperor would bathe many times in preparation for the Persidan ceremonies. Now, we've got one more place near the south gate we want to check out before we leave the Temple of Heaven for the day. Let's head over there now. Constructed in the year of 1530, this is the Circular Mound Altar. Every year on the day of the winter solstice, the emperor would offer sacrifices here. Most of the sacrifices were burnt in the green glazed stove, beginning with a shaved and washed calf. The sacrifices were offered to heaven as thanks, but also as a prayer for a good future. Oh, okay. The green one. Yeah, the green one. Alrighty. So we are now done at the Temple of Heaven. Yes. We were here for how long? Maybe like five hours? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we were there for almost five hours. Um, but that was fun. It was very, uh, you know, another historical type of, I guess, touristy activity. Kind of like a lot of things we did in Xi'an, but I don't know, it's just really cool. There's so much intricacies that go into all this stuff. A lot of feng shui. Yeah, um, and that's all connected, right? Even from Xi'an. Yeah, and here. you can see a lot of the philosophies connected to what we saw in Xi'an. Um, just the, yeah, the amount of thinking that went into all this stuff back then, it's insane. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. But once again, we're hungry for some food. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> so let's go find some food. Who are you gonna call? Who are you gonna call? Call my side 10. Huh? Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. <laughs> Damn, yo, I gotta rethink my life. <laughs> yo, have you ever seen a cab that nice? Look at that. Chinese electric vehicles, man. Okay, now it's back to the city for some food. Let's go. Okay, so now we decided to meet up with Lu's childhood friend who now lives in Beijing. She hasn't seen him in... 20... 20-something years. 20-something years. They reconnected during COVID. Um, her and a bunch of old classmates had a group on WeChat um, where they kind of just, yeah, caught up with each other. And so now we're here back in China and Beijing. So we're yes. going to go meet him for some food. All right, so I'm practicing Lou's friend's name right now. So, Zhou Hongxia. Zhou Hongxia. Zhou Hongxia. Is that Sichuan dialect? Yeah. Okay. Zhou Hongxia. It's tripping me up. This restaurant's impossible to find. After searching for what felt like at least 20 minutes, we finally found the restaurant and met up with Lou's friend. So when in Beijing, have Beijing duck. It's more than 20 years, we said. That's for the duck, of course. Okay. That's to keep it warm. Wow. I've never seen tomatoes so fancy before. There's uh, pecans in there. Never seen that before. Mmm. Some sort of like, a, actually, I don't know. It's like cream. Rolling. Is it cream or yeah. something? Yeah, some sort of like cream or sauce. With walnut. Never tried anything like that before. It's so interesting. This is my em embarrassing construction of this Beijing duck. <laughs> Burrito? Like wrong, that. wrong. Hey, I can see you judging me. No, I didn't. Eat the whole thing. Mmm. That's so good. It's like salty and sweet. Right? Yeah. Right? yeah. More, sal more salty than sweet, but like the right amount of like sweetness, I think. <laughs> and so, we continued to eat to our heart's content. And even after we were done eating, we ate even more. The duck was amazing, 
but Lou and her friend being from Chongqing, we needed something spicy to top up our stomachs. We walked around the mall for a little longer, and I miraculously found a pair of leaning shoes in my size. This was an ongoing endeavor I didn't show you in my other videos, but man, men's size 12 or 13 US is hard to find in China. With that all being said, that's all I have for you in today's video. I'm really happy with all we were able to explore today. Going with the flow and not over planning always results in an adventurous time. I still have one more Beijing video on the way, so please stay tuned. You won't want to miss it, so if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and also, please drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.